from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. Now, if you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 52. In episode 51, we looked at the habitats of three North American mammals. Now, habitats are the types of areas that support the needs of a given animal. In this episode, we're also going to explore the meaning of biomes. Now, just as an animal's range and its habitat are often related, the habitat of an animal has a lot to do with the biome in which the animal is found. Let's start with a review of habitat. A habitat is an area that provides for the needs of an animal. Those needs are food, water, shelter, and space. Now, you may remember in previous episodes, we shared how pet owners, farmers, and those who care for animals need to provide for their needs that the animals can no longer get from their natural environment. The form of meeting those needs change when the animal is domesticated, but the needs don't change. Now, wild animals need to live in places that have the means for them to meet their own needs for food, water, space, and shelter. One uh, fantastic wild animal in North America is the bighorn sheep. Now, it's not a very adaptable animal. As a result, it lives in a fairly limited range. Bighorn sheep live in two basic habitats, craggy mountains and deserts. We'll take a close look at both of those kinds of habitats, but first, let's learn more about bighorn sheep. Overlooking the Snake River, this bighorn sheep occupies the habitat where it thrives. Bighorn sheep are creatures of the mountains. They're agile on the rocky terrain near Hell's Canyon on the border between Oregon and Idaho. Bighorn sheep are native here, as well as the Rocky Mountains and the high country of California, Arizona, Nevada, and into Mexico's Baja California. This is a group of females, ewes, and one lamb. During the early summer months, they graze on plants at the edge of the river. They are safe from land-based predators here. Their ability to easily move among the craggy terrain and loose rocks gives them an advantage in escaping predators. Their sharp hooves are shaped in a way that allows them to grip the rocky ground allowing easy movement. Most of the year the males, the rams, live in small groups allowing the ewes and their lambs to have the best feeding grounds. As for the rams, like this one feeding on a bush, they face a future of butting heads with each other, an example of fighting for the right to reproduce. In mid-June, travelers on the wild portion of the Snake River are rewarded with views of bighorn sheep on the rocky banks of the river. After being overhunted in the 19th century, bighorn sheep are protected today. They continue to grace the mountain country along the Snake River. You're watching Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. The bighorn sheep you just saw live in a roadless area in Hell's Canyon, the deepest canyon in the United States. It's one of the roughest terrains to cross unless you travel by boat in the Snake River. I shot the video from a jet boat in the river and felt plenty of excitement to see these magnificent animals so close up. Now, while I videotaped a young ram, there was no mature rams in our view. 
Now this cover of the wildlife card shows two mature rams. And you can see why this species has the common name of bighorn sheep. It refers to the horns on the mature rams, horns that can weigh more than all their bones put together. They use these horns for one purpose, to fight with each other for the right to reproduce during the rut when the ewes are receptive. The rut occurs during the fall, and it's said that Hell's Canyon echoes with the sound of these animals ramming their heads into each other. This map on the wildlife card shows the area of North America where they live, their range. Besides the steep, craggy mountains of eastern Oregon and western Idaho, they also live in the deserts of California, Nevada, Arizona, and northern Mexico. As mentioned in the video, their physical adaptations provide them with protection from predators and access to plants, which other animals would struggle to get. Inside the wildlife card, we learn about the habitat of bighorn sheep. During the summer, they live at altitudes ranging from 6,000 to 8,000 feet in the mountain terrain. In the winter, they descend to 5,000 feet to avoid deep snow, but they still favor the steep, rocky terrain. Now, Hell's Canyon is the perfect place for them to range. Each small herd moves about a, in a range of about 20 square miles, so they require a lot of space. They require a great amount of vegetation to eat, and this type of country has sparse vegetation. So after taking notes from this section on habitats, we can summarize the bighorn habitat by writing bighorn sheep populate craggy mountain terrain between 5,000 and 8,000 feet of elevation. There they find their food in mountain meadows and grassy slopes. The steep, craggy slopes provide shelter from predators, and their low elevation range allows them to escape from the cold weather in the winter and the heavy snow that covers the vegetation. Some populations occupy rocky regions of desert, that being desert habitats. So we've used the facts from the wildlife card by taking notes, but then we've used our own connecting words, shown in all caps, to achieve the language function of describing a habitat. You may want to separately copy the connecting language from the wildlife cards, but that would be to use it in a, a future description. But you don't want to copy the wording from the wildlife card in your current description. It's best to put your own words to paper to communicate the habitat description in your report, using connecting phrases to bring out the facts. Now, when you think about the descriptions we've done in earlier episodes, you may realize that describing a habitat is very similar to describing a simpler object. You still describe the habitat by listing its parts and by modifying nouns with adjectives. We use the words steep and grassy to describe the slopes where bighorn sheep find their food. As mentioned earlier, some populations of bighorn sheep, actually a subspecies, live in the deserts of the American Southwest. A desert habitat is, by definition, short on water, and plants are not abundant either. Now, some deserts are hot during the day, actually most of them, and cold at night. It's interesting that bighorn sheep can live in such a different habitat, but we know that they do. They have similar physical adaptations, but their behavior adaptations are likely to be very different. We'll revisit bighorn sheep when we cover adaptation segments of our animal reports. Now, I want to show you a book. This book is entitled Animals of the High Mountains. Now, we know that bighorn sheep find their homes there. They share this, they share this country with marmots and mountain lions. It's a book from National Geographic, High Mountains, Animals That often get confused with bighorn sheep now that you see on the cover of this is the mountain goat. Now mountain goats have longer fur than the bighorn sheep and the males have sharp horns. And that usually not, they're curved backwards, okay, but not as much as the bighorn sheep. They're longer horns than on the females, but like I said, they don't curve around all the way like the bighorn sheep. Now, mountain goats are agile climbers, ascending steep slopes to avoid predators. 
Small herds of females raise their young while the males lead a solitary life uh, until the rutting season. Mountain goats range from the north slopes above timberline to south facing slopes at lower elevations. During the warmer months, mountain goats roam through an area of 14 square miles. These elevations form what's called an alpine habitat. Now alpine simply means high elevation. There's some overlap in the range of mountain goats and bighorn sheep, but most of the mountain goat range extends much further north through northwest Canada and into Alaska. Another alpine habitat animal is the doll sheep seen here in Denali National Park in Alaska. The doll sheep inspired a wealthy industrialist to push for the establishment of Mount McKinley National Park, now renamed Denali. The sheep were hunted to feed working crews and they were in danger of becoming extinct. The National Park was established largely to protect the doll sheep. Now, while the doll sheep looks similar to bighorn sheep, it's a distinct species. While it occupies a similar eco ecological niche, its range is different from the bighorns. Doll sheep are found further north and with no overlap in range. While they require the same high cliff and alpine meadows as the bighorn sheep, they occupy a different region of North America. Doll sheep engage in similar mating behavior where they butt heads to, with the rival males to see who gets to mate with the ewes in the herd. This explosive crash is all about size. The ram with the longest horns, determined by ramming head on at 20 miles an hour, gets to mate. The challenger awaits another year to try again. So we have some similar animals in mountain terrains of North America. They have a lot in common. They need the same kind of terrain to escape predation by grizzly bears, mountain lions, and wolves. The habitats they need are very similar, but they don't all live in the same place. Do they all have the same biome? Well, we'll try to answer that question when we return.